what is a good way if, if you see a player that, especially because I see this so much with people who are like, be better golfers, really get the phone out and videotape their swings and really get into positions. And so many people email me and request videos about the inside takeaway. And um, <laughs> this, you yeah. know, and myself, I have it. And uh, so, so why does that happen? They really get that. So let's trace that back. And yeah. so what would you say is like, what's First of all, Let's define people have first. told me that if you do that, there is no good golf from here at well, all. Well, okay, so, so let's, they're like that has to be fixed. So, so um, I'm not a I'm not a guy who's an absolutist. Okay, okay. So Nancy Lopez did fine. John Daly did fine. Raymond Floyd did okay with a club head going very in. However, they had to make up athletically a lot of things. John Daly went really long. Um, Nancy Lopez took it, crossed it, and was able to throw it back behind her. And had a so, huge long tempo. To, yeah, to make it yeah. Up. So, but let's just kind of construct what that is first. What inside takeaway? Is. Right. Yeah. So, so first off, that my mass or my balance point of my club is right. Here. Okay. So, if the mass of the club tends to go in, and especially if I have a short swing, I'm going to have a problem now finding the ball. So my brain goes, well, the club's too far in too early, so I'm going to bring it back out and hit, hit like that all day long. The problem is when you do this, you're so not So the really reaction to this becomes steep and typical. Yeah. Typically, I mean, most of the time. So if you're halfway decent, you'll probably do this, feel this, and you go, oh, no, I can't hit it. Tilt back, lose the bottom, hit behind it, bend it, whatever. And so then will that then also that catch-up move become feel, a little feel, flippy? Well, and you'll have to rotate your arms to find the ball. A little roll. Yeah, okay. you have to. So it, your brain knows where the ball is. So if it's in this way, it's going to try to rotate it down. It's one of the issues with guys who see them, they start sliding towards the target. Yeah. They're going to also start rotating arms. So I, I think understanding that this is the center mass of the club, if I was just to, let's say, move my pressure right first and then rotate back, this club naturally tends to get thrown more down the line anyway. Right, so this the mass of the club, when you did that... Yeah, if I'm not thinking like, okay, let me hit this golf ball, let me just... That's ideal. Yeah, and I didn't do any. You don't have to stuff. No. Okay. If this is a so, if I have to hinge my wrist and bend my wrist, any of that kind of stuff is kind of like a manufactured way to get rid of the. I mean, it's an artificial way to get the club in line. Yeah, because for a long time, people people um, would tell me, "What's a backswing? It's this. It's this, and a turn." And that got me just screwed up really yeah, badly. Real fast. Okay. Yeah, don't do that. Okay. What's a telltale sign for you when you have a player that somebody has desperately tried not to have an a inside takeaway and now has no force behind their backswing? Well, they're doing exactly what you just did. It's independently moving the wrists and hands before the pivot takes over. Yeah. So, if, I mean, if you go back to our original conversation, yeah. I'm, trying to move, I'm just trying to create ground force before the club moves. So go, go uh, one step that way. Okay. Yeah. So if I'm right here, yeah. if I'm going to push off the left to the right, and I'm just doing this, there's no real tension in my system, right? Yeah. So if I'm going to move this system, as I throw that back, it now goes in this direction. Yeah. Now, because I'm on a tilted angle, that might feel down the line, but because I'm pivoting, there I go. Yeah. I, I, can, I can control the max. But any of this artificial stuff... Right. try to get the club going in, a, in the right direction. It doesn't mean that you might not feel that it's staying this way. You might. Yeah. But it's certainly not going to be artificially rotating your hands or wrists to yeah. get the club to go to the inside. Uh -huh. All right. So my question would be then, maybe maybe it's off base, but if I'm doing this, wouldn't the face be shut? No, it's square to your forward bend of your body. Okay. Yeah. So th yeah. this angle, so stand up straight. Now that's square, right? Now you're to this. Right. But yeah. Now go into your forward bend. So that's square. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, do you have something heavy? Oh, I have something heavy. So what can we learn from moving? Because the thing I've noticed with like really good golfers and also little kids, like a really good golfer will take a light golf club and swing it as if it's a thousand pounds. And a really bad golfer will take a, a heavy golf club or a normal golf club and it'll look like it's as light as a feather, like yeah. it's going everywhere. A, a slow motion little kid swing is beautiful. Right. They're, well, they're managing the mass of the club. So 
what can we learn from moving sure. heavy things Trade and it. then how can we okay so like if this is a kettlebell a okay, perfect probably like a 16. so if i get in here and i have my feet just kind of prone arms are kind of hanging on top of my chest they're not to the side yeah so let it hang on top okay the natural movement when i start to move left you can see it works in a straight line see that so I, when i push left and then right this it's actually interesting swings. though go back to not moving at all yeah and okay. then when you get it going, you don't move in the direction it's first going to move. No. Uh, it's a Explain step. just kind of the first pulse move of this. Yeah, so I'm trying to move the weight of this object uh -huh. with my mass in my body. That's an athletic piece. Yeah. Okay, and in act actuality, they don't go together. So I don't go like this, right? Mm -hmm. The movement is actually left first to get it swinging. Then yeah. it gets swinging. The weight is left back a little bit. Right. And then it's in motion. Right. Yeah. So that's why you see some players have a little press, like DJ. Uh -huh. So DJ gets in here and he has a little bit of a press. So that's yeah. what he's doing. Okay. So it's not like if he was on the force plates, it's not like he would stay there and he's just Absolutely manufacturing not. a little hand press. Right. He's moving. Yeah. Dustin actually yeah. goes forward back before. The yeah. Moves. Yeah. Milo, a friend, of, a friend of mine, he gets before he, and he's a very good ball striker. He gets, we measured it before he takes it back. He goes 89% into his left leg, right, and then takes it back. Yeah. So that's and that trigger move. And then I had him hit a grouping of balls where he wasn't allowed to do that, yeah. and he became like just a little better than me, like yeah. you know, like almost average. Yeah, and that, that's one of the issues where and this is just my opinion. This this doesn't mean I'm right, but it's kind of an anecdotal observation. Is that you get a good player and they want to create control. This might demographically not resonate to, to your audience, but what I've noticed is this might relate, but if you have a very good player and you try to control the club base, okay, and you try to eliminate, let's say, motion, generally, haphazardly, it affects the club face more. Eliminate motion, like like spinning? Rate of closure yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, what, or face control. So they start trying to get to get away from that, and yeah. at some point, that doesn't happen maybe in a year, it might happen in two or three, their golf swing actually becomes less fast, more club face rotation, yeah. because they eliminated some of those motions. So, but if you looked at like the best ball strikers, I mean, Xander Shoffley exclusively does step drills. Show me, show me Xander step drills. Xander takes a driver, right? He goes like this, step right. Starting with his mass board. Clutch still here, step. So the mass of his body has preceded the, the motion of the club. Right. I know that like Anthony Kim used to talk about, he would know if his shot was gonna be good or not once he got to here. Yeah. What does that mean? Well he's think? moved his mass, his sequence is right. Okay. And so then everything becomes a reaction. Yeah, just like a pitcher, right? The right. wind up, here's your here's your wind up. So on left foot, right foot, wind up. Yeah. Same type of thing. So show me again on the kettlebell because I yeah. people get annoyed me for interrupting, but I, <laughs> I, 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 I had to. Okay, had so to. if I have my feet just normal, yeah, right, I'm just going to put them slightly flared. Mm -hmm. So in order for me to move this object, I'm going to push left first through the kettlebell and forge. Back up. And that little motion. Now I can actually shift my pressure to the right, and then once that does, I'm essentially done with my shift. I don't have to go further right. There's no more loading. Well, there's more loading, but I'm done with the actual shifting. Oh, okay. And that's where people kind of mess up. So what they do is they get in here and they go, I'm going to shift. They keep shifting. Oh, like you're okay. not trying to do that. Okay. So if I have this thing losing space, yeah. I'm never getting it back. So I want to get in here and have this thing get thrown, right? Like that. So later on, that sequence works. Yeah. 